welcome to an episode of What's New with Nadine, and today we are taking it on the road. And I am here with nutritionist and dietitian Melissa Mitri, and we are discussing three simple diet habits to start today. And this is going to be part one in a series uh, over the next couple months that we're going to discuss the holiday weight gain. Uh, the temptations that are abundant during this time and uh, naturally we all are concerned with putting on little weight, some of us that are in maintenance mode, um, and how to avoid all of the pitfalls. And so I'm going to enlist uh, the help of some professionals because I certainly don't know the answers. And so uh, today's episode will be um, led by uh, Melissa and she's going to discuss with us um, how we can survive <laughs> the turkey, <laughs> the ham, the holiday parties, <laughs> all, of the all of the great <laughs> things and then for me as an Italian all the fish on Christmas Eve. Um, and so I want to welcome Melissa. I do have a script today because I don't want to make any errors. And so pardon my uh, looking down from time to time. But this is important because Melissa is a registered dietitian. Uh, she is the owner of Melissa Mitri Nutrition. And she provides uh, nutrition counseling here in Milford, Connecticut. And we're in her beautiful office today which is part of a wellness studio, and the uh, wellness studio is beautiful. It has yoga and mm -hmm. uh, it's called women's wellness. Women's yeah. wellness, and um, it's a great sanctuary for women, especially uh, new moms. Um, and Melissa coaches both in her office or virtual coaching uh, sessions, and I will let her explain and expand on uh, what her practices involve. So welcome, Melissa. Right. Thank you so much, Nadine. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. And I will say my daughter, who works at a hospital here um, as a chef, um, worked with Melissa, works with Melissa uh, at Griffin Hospital, and she made this introduction. I'm grateful yeah. for that. Really yeah. grateful. So, thank you. Thank you. So welcome. So tell everybody a little more about yourself. Yeah, sure. Well, thank you so much again. And I'm, I just want to say I'm really excited to be here with you and thank you. Um, just really love everything that you've been doing and working towards. Thank so, you. We're okay. trying. Together we're yeah. going to go forward and uh, help yeah. everybody. Yes, yes. So, um, so yes. So um, like you said, I'm a that was a great introduction. I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist and um, I work here in Milford. I've been a dietitian a little over 12 years. Oh, you have? And yeah, so um, so worked with um, in, mainly in hospitals up until about a couple years ago where I started my practice here. And I specialize in working with women, particularly moms. Mm -hmm. And um, my specialty is really helping women to kind of break free from the yo-yo dieting yes. cycles that so many of us suffer from. Yes. And I, um, I really do that because I've seen in my experience working with hundreds of women, I see a lot of those same trends that often they're coming to see me as a dietitian after they've tried so many different diets, um, whether that's keto, intermittent fasting, trends. paleo, all yeah. of those trends, yes. and, and not necessarily that they're all bad, um, but they're following them on their own without really knowing the right way and right. if that diet is going to work for them. Right. So um, with that said, I have learned a lot along the way and really learned how to help women overcome that cycle um, so they can lose weight for good because yeah. that's always the biggest challenge. Yeah. Right? The long term. The long term, yes. yes, because that's always, you know, we, we want to lose weight quickly and that's always one of my client's biggest goals, right. but the, the challenge is staying there and when you get there and you get to your goal weight and you feel great is how to stay there and that's what I focus on. So um, I really, from, from my experience, have created my own three-step approach right. to counseling. Right. So, um, so if you Very like, simple, can, three, three, three steps, steps is great. It doesn't have to be Let, a lot of steps. Yes, yeah. I want you to tell everyone that's watching um, and before you start, Melissa is a mom of two little boys, Nick, Nicholas and Alex. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I looked from my paper. I remembered uh, they're absolutely adorable, and you can follow them on her Facebook and Instagram page. Thank you. They're um, well, keeping busy. They keep me busy. Yeah. <laughs> Helps keep the weight off as yes. well. So I'll let you dive right in. Let everybody yeah. know um, where sure. where you would like to um, start. Yeah. Sure. So. Um, 
So yeah, so really, so just to um, add a little bit about the, the fad diets and um, mm -hmm. kind of the individualized uh, approach that I take is that um, while I said that not, you know, a lot of the fad diets, sometimes they may work in the short term, right. um, but also everyone's an individual. So right. really my approach is very individualized because if you can think about maybe a friend or a family member that you know, they maybe I know that your intermittent fasting works yes. really well for you, it does. but there may be some other um, close friends or family members where it does not work well. No, I don't recommend it. We'll, we'll elaborate on that after that, you know, just because something works for me yeah. definitely doesn't mean it transfers to yeah, else. and yeah. I think that that's really the most important thing is figuring out what's going to work for you and not feel like you're a failure or you, yes. you've done something wrong yes. if it's not working for you. Yes. Um, so as an example, I've had a client about a couple months ago that was following a very specific diet before coming to see me with her best friend and they were doing this exact Teaming. same thing yes. Yeah, and going to the gym together doing everything the right. same and they, um, her friend lost 20 pounds and she only lost 5 pounds. So she came to me feeling really frustrated and you know, why yes. am I not losing the weight yes. like my friend is, I'm doing the exact same thing. And that's just the proof that everyone is an individual and that you can't just follow something because someone that you know was successful. Right. Um, so uh, that's why it's really important to work with a professional to figure yes. out what is going to work for you. And, um, and, and that just shows that because of so many, so many of my clients have come to me after these things not working and that's the proof that it really only works in the short term. Right. So, and we can um, all relate to that, especially us as married women. Right. Because if we start a diet, um, let's say January 1st, of course, there's the trend, uh, you know, first week of January, you and your husband are both uh, committed. By February, he looks great and you're still struggling. Right. That's always so we, that's a great example that the proof is in the pudding. Yeah. What works for a woman may not work for a man right. and your girlfriend. Um, although you never know really what they're doing or Right, you don't always You don't know, know what yeah. goes on in someone's home, if they're, um, you know, I, I, yeah, I think you maybe. should enlist professional guidance and help yeah. in this process to identify sure. the triggers uh, yeah. which we'll discuss as well. Yeah, you know? absolutely. No, that's absolutely true. So um, so really what my three-step counseling approach is, so, it, so it's in three steps, and again, very simple. So number one is we identify your eating triggers. Yes. So we identify first before changing anything in your diet right is right. is identifying why you're eating the way you are so everyone has some sort of triggers yes. whether that's your your stress foods your stress yes. um depression yes um you know just comfort turning to food for comfort a lot of it's very common to do that and completely boredom. normal yeah boredom. boredom so many that's a big big yes. reason that i hear from a lot of my clients is boredom so and really uh, there's a statistic that about 85 percent of the reasons why we eat is actually not related to being physically hungry. hungry. So it's kind of crazy to think that, but it's true. And that's why it's really, that's a really crucial step right. in any nutrition counseling program is to identify those triggers. Because if you don't, and you just start a new diet right. without really knowing what's going to work for you or why you're eating the way you are now, it's not getting to the root of the problem. So you're really kind of just masking that problem. And that's the big reason why it may right. not last. And definition of insanity. You're going to keep doing the same thing over and over again, right. expecting a result, right. or just eliminating one entire food group, mm -hmm. which I've talked about in other episodes myself. I, you know, I don't understand that. Right. You know. Yeah. The denial of one yes. food group. Yeah. yeah. Right. It doesn't last. Yeah. It's kind of a going going against what your body truly yes. needs and being over restricted. So so having you know kind of din and it, this requires it's not easy. It requires you to be vulnerable, right? Yes. It requires you to admit be honest. You're doing. Yes. Yeah. But um, it's just like if you see if you're seeing a therapist, for instance, like you right. need to be honest with that therapist in order to reap the benefits of that therapy. Right. So it's and that's a commitment. Same. Right. The honesty is a commitment. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It is. But it, it feels so good. Yes. Once you do it, right? Like it feels so if you if you feel uncomfortable sharing what you're eating even to your spouse or to your friends, right. you can share it with a professional. That's an right. unbiased person that's going to be able to help you and um, support you in a nudge non judgmental right. way. Right. So so that's the first step. Well, we like purging our secrets. I, I, I do. I mean, I think yeah. once you vent to a girlfriend and tell her and, and it's off your chest, it's, it is freeing. Right. So they'll mm -hmm. have you at their, um, I don't want to say disposal, but I think once you create that atmosphere that they can tell you everything, they're already on their road. Right. 
Definitely to success. Yes. Right. Yeah. The hardest part I feel is in more the beginning. comfortable. Yes. Right. yes. Yeah, Admitting uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> where our weaknesses are. A lot of women, I think, also eat late at night. No, yes. well, I shouldn't oh, say women. Funny. I think. Yeah. Of, I know. I you know I grew up in a home where you know my mom would, you know. Mm -hmm. Sneak food at night. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the chocolate wrappers are all around the house and the ice cream. And so you have to identify it. Right. Whatever it is. Yes. Otherwise, you can't help. Them. There's a, right. Exactly. And, and I think that a lot of us are so distracted and busy that we're not even realizing we're eating half the time that Definitely. we are. So <laughs> it's so important. Mindless eating. Right. It's so important to take that step back to really fix the problem because it doesn't have to be so hard. It doesn't have to be so restrictive. It's, you know, that hardest part is the beginning and being honest in what you're doing. But then in that way, you're helping yourself in the long yes. term. And then you can allow yourself to eat your favorite foods and not feel so restricted if you're paying more attention to what you're doing and how hungry you actually mm -hmm. are so and then the second step number in two. my yeah so number two my process is planning yes. so planning um you know meal planning is, is of course very important very key to your success um, if you're prepared ahead of time yes. and you know what you're going to eat that's huge that's going to make your life yes. a lot easier um and and really with the planning part of it you know after we identify those triggers all of those things and work through that then we identify a meal plan specific to you. So meaning to your likes, your food likes and dislikes. Do you have any allergies mm -hmm. or intolerances? Do you have any type of medical condition right. um, that that requires you to be on a special diet? Do you need to avoid certain foods? Right. And also the biggest thing is what are your overall goals? What are your goals in right. working with a professional and changing your diet? And that's going to determine your meal plan, your specific custom meal plan, because there's, there shouldn't be any cookie cutter type of plan. Right, that's I, so critical. So important, yes. because, right, it's not helpful if I were to just hand out a plan that's not specific to you, mm -hmm. and, and you're gonna take it home, and you're, you're not gonna follow it. You may follow it for a week or two, but it's it's not su suitable for you as an individual and what you like and dislike, right. so it has and to be. And do you be. provide uh, recipes or guidance? Yeah. Yes, I think yeah. that's, you know, I think everyone gets scared um, too because they're thinking, well, how will I cook? What will we eat? Right. My right. husband, your children, yes. Yeah. So you can help them get over that angst that it's not going to be, you know, right. a bowl of lettuce, right. which is everyone's thought when yes. they say the word diet is it's a bowl of lettuce with uh, vinegar or lemon sprinkled on top right. Right. and you should lose yes. five pounds by Friday and, right. uh, you know, yes. so I think people want that variety. Oh yeah, right? absolutely. You have to, you have to have that variety to feel satisfied and to yes. not get bored with the plan. And that's, I actually use a meal planning software oh, you do? Um, called That Clean Life and it's an oh. excellent program and I, so I, I can create custom meal plans with grocery lists attached to that. Which Brilliant. that saves a ton of time, Brilliant. right? Because it's like one step to get the recipy, but then the second, the longer, you know, what takes longer is figuring right. out like how much do I need to buy and all of those things. So it saves you a ton of time. So that's that meal yes. planning process. And I think that um, those uh, companies that uh, pr pr come to the door in the box, the food uh, preparations, yeah. I think their popularity isn't really the food, it's the simplicity. Right. Mm -hmm. It's almost mind numbing. Oh, I don't even have to think about it. It's here, I open the refrigerator, take out, the, cut the envelope, follow the three step instructions. Yes. So I think that they're successful because women don't have the time. Right. Mm -hmm. To yes. meal plan and batch cook, which YouTube um, has created a whole industry on, uh, but it's not practical for everybody. Right. So if you can help them put it right in their cart, all the ingredients, what to buy. Right. Simplify it, simplify it, ladies. We can be yes, successful. Exactly. It doesn't yes. have to be so intimidating or those fancy pictures that you see on Pinterest. Yes. With all of the, you know, meal planning for a whole week. It, yes. it does not have to be. Get off way. Instagram and YouTube. Right? Right. Right. <laughs> if you want to feel bad about yourself, turn on Instagram. Yeah. I mean, follow the right people too. Yes. I mean, it's really important yes. to follow those on, on social media that encourage you and that lift you up and don't yes. make you feel like you're not doing enough or you're not right. doing good enough. Because that's easy to, that's really easy to happen when you're scrolling through and you see these perfect meals and, yes. and all of these perfect things. bodies yeah. perfect hair and makeup and you know everything is uh created in that space of course <laughs> yeah you don't know yes. what's going on the other right. side or off camera and this so is real really world important. real advice real counseling real help real results right yeah and i can relate i have two kids of my own so right. i know that i i too don't have the time to make fancy meals and that doesn't mean that you can't eat healthy and you right. can't meet your goals 
So and yeah. you're not a bad mother if you don't cook like um, you know Giada De Laurentiis, whom I well, love. But you know <laughs> that's what she's doing all day long. I think. What of um, course. Of course, yeah. And so number so, three, right? yes. So number three is my favorite and most yes. important one yes. is is creating consistent habits, yes. consistency. So it's critical. So critical, yes. Yeah. So that's something that a lot of us struggle with. That's lack of consistency is actually one of the biggest reasons why we regain our weight back mm -hmm. is because we're not consistent with our habits over right. a long period of time. The discipline. Right. Yeah. It's typically two to three months, maybe, maybe four months. And then at some point we fall off, you know, like you'll fall off the bandwagon right. or right. you start to regain the weight back or we hit a plateau. And this is because maybe we're being too strict. Maybe we're not working right. with a professional. We don't know the right things to do and we're trying to do it on our own. And, you know, it only lasts for a little while and right. then you start to gain that weight back or your, your habits start to go revert back to right. what they were. So I help my clients to figure out how to keep those habits consistent with that support, with that accountability. I provide weekly accountability with my clients so that they don't lose Critical. Their motivation. Critical. Right? Because, yeah, a lot of my clients say that, oh, I, may, I, I sort of know what to do but I need someone to push me to do it. Right. And I think that's a big part of it. And some of us may know, you know, even if you don't have a nutrition degree, you may have a good basic knowledge right. of what to eat, but you're not actually doing it. Yeah. So it's getting yourself to actually doing it and needing that support and that accountability. Right. And that's what's gonna create those consistent habits and being realistic too with what your goals are and make sure that you're taking those steps towards your goals. It's not enough to say like, oh, I want to do this, but it's taking those steps one by one, one at a time, right? not rushing Simplifying it. Simplifying it, yes. Yeah. And, you, and a professional can help you when you reach the plateau, right? Right. Oh, or yeah. you start to backslide. We've all done And that's it. normal. Yeah, it yes. happens. And you can, what, you probably t tweak their uh, meal plan. Right. Um, but then mm -hmm. if you're not honest with Melissa, you know, <laughs> you're shooting yeah. yourself in the foot. Right. They were going to say, why, why are you not losing any more weight? Yes. Right. And it's just investigate, investigating all of it. And the convenience of the virtual sessions is you don't have to get dressed, get in the car, get babysitters. Right. Um, you know, yes. just to come and see her face to face and you can have that luxury which hopefully keeps everybody on track and right. motivated yes definitely to be able to call in at your scheduled time yeah. and say hey I'm struggling we're all we're all human we struggle in this process oh for sure I think we all yeah. need it I, I have a business coach like we all need a coach we need a coach we and someone do. to support us in many aspects of our life and it really it, it improves so many things it gives us that extra support that we yeah. need to stay motivated yeah so yeah. we all need a little private cheerleader leader in the morning <laughs> Definitely. I wish I had 10 of them. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Me yeah. too. Um, so start with your three-step process. Sure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So um, so the, the three simple habits. Three yeah. simple habits. Three simple habits. Okay. So these three simple habits, that when they're, they are really simple, does not have to be complicated. So even if you are right now saying to yourself, I have not even thought about my diet, I haven't changed my diet in years, I haven't exercised in years, mm -hmm. and... Mm -hmm. You know, no matter where you feel like your diet is completely terrible, then you can start these things today because we're all in a different stage in our life. Yes. We all, um, no matter where you kind of are right now, you right. can start these things today right. to kind of get yourself on the path to feeling better and getting into a momentum of taking better care of yourself and feeling good. So, so number one in the simple habit you can start today is start eating a good balanced breakfast. breakfast. Okay. Yes. yes. So that's number one. So a lot of it, a lot of us may know this, may know that this breakfast is important. Um, but the fact of the matter is most women are not doing it. And, and, and I see this all the time and, and I see with my new clients when I when I have a new client sign on to work with me, I send them paperwork where they tell me everything they eat on a typical yes. day. Again, no judgment. Um, but with that said, I see that majority of the time they're not eating breakfast, or if they are, it's not really a balanced breakfast. And are they going through the drive-through? Because I think that's a pitfall for a lot Sometimes, of women. In, in, yeah. You know, you have small children. I have an empty nest, so I'm not out in the car mm -hmm. at 8 a.m. or 7:30 and running to the office where a lot of women are. Right. They've mm -hmm. gone, dropped the kids off to school, and now they're going to go through. The, uh, the drive-through. Right, right. It's yes. convenient, right? Yes. So yes, I see that a lot. And and the, the, the processed food that's in fast food places, it just, it doesn't, it has a lot of calories. Yes. And, and, and salt. And, and salt and yes. all those things, but it doesn't fill you up. No. So surprisingly with all of those calories, if you ever can think about a time where you had fast food whether for any meal, 
it really only holds you over for a couple hours because it's processed. It's not. It's not it's natural, right? It's right. not in its natural form. So then your body keeps wanting more of it. It keeps you get hungry again a few hours later, and it creates that cycle of always craving right. more food. And um, so really the, the best thing you can do is to, one, start having something for breakfast, but you want to have something that's well balanced. Protein and carbs. And tell everybody, yeah. like, what is your go-to breakfast? Yeah, so for me, I mean, I, I always, I, I like to have eggs. Right. Um, so eggs are a great protein. So you want to make sure your, your breakfast always has a good protein, right. a carb, and a healthy fat. So all of those three components. Right. So the protein is the egg. egg. It could be the egg or it could be a Greek yogurt um, or cottage cheese. Mm. I love cottage cheese. Yeah, <laughs> and it's filling. So so a protein and then uh, the carbs. So it could be a slice of whole wheat toast. Mm -hmm. It can be some fresh fruit like berries or strawberries. Yes. And then the healthy fats can be um, like a little bit of peanut butter on that toast or right. avocado. Oh, avocado, avocado, my favorite. Yes. yes, and it's so filling. You think about when you have that food. Avocado toast. It's so good. Yes. Yeah. Oh my God, so good. It's pumpkin really seeds good. on top, raw yes. pumpkin yes. seeds. Yes, yes, yes. Pumpkin seeds, hemp seeds are good too. Oh, I love it. I yeah. love it. Yeah, very good. I have my granddaughter eating it. Right now, I this morning I introduced her uh, to um, pomegranate, which I bought in watch a YouTube video on how to get those seeds out very quickly. I watched a video and did that. So I introduced her to pomegranate seeds. She kept saying pomegranate. She was trying to say it. And then I brought a persimmon and then my husband came in the kitchen and tried to tell her how to say all of this in Italian. And it was ukagi. And so she was walking around holding the persimmon in her hand going ukagi, ukagi. I go, she's going to start school in a couple of years. I go, say, what is this? And she's going to say ukagi. <laughs> but um, you have to introduce great fruit and uh, vegetables yeah. to these children when oh, they're of in mine and yes. granddaughter's two and a half. So she had her blueberries, her pumpkin seeds, her pomegranate. We didn't slice the um, ukagi yet because it's still too hard. <laughs> these are great things to introduce to the kids. Oh, absolutely. And they so, see, you know, she sees me eating it. Right. She really wants to eat it because she sees me eating it. They're right. such copycats. Yeah. No, it's true. Yeah. It's very true. They notice, your kids notice everything at that age. And so if you're a mom and you are, um, you know, that's that's often a big motivator for my mom clients is trying to show their kids healthy yes. habits. So, yes. you know, Start you doing it, young. Yeah, so you doing it yourself, yes. then that's the easiest way to teach your kids healthy habits. If you're not eating those foods yourself, and you're, but you're giving them to your kids, right. then they're going to say, oh, why aren't you eating it? Right. So it's really important. And that can be a, often a good motivator, yes. um, you know, to do that for yourself as and, well. Um, Dr. Al said he eats the same food every day for breakfast. I don't know if you know what yeah. it is. I forget what it is. Yeah, I know Cheerios. he eats the same things every day. He yeah. eats a bowl of Cheerios every day. <laughs> and I, I think some people might find that monotonous, but I kind of eat the same food every day. Yeah, um, you can keep things simple. I, yeah, I keep things that. simple. Yeah, you know, have an too. elaborate, more... Um, colorful yeah. dinner or lunch, but right. you know, if you're rushing, keep mm -hmm. it simple. And I'm not proposing right. Cheerios, but right. But if you have a breakfast that works well for you, that yes. satisfies you, yes. and that's why really kind of paying attention to blueberries that on top. That. Yes. Yeah. Almond and milk. Yeah. You, you should do what works for you, yes. and, and because your body will tell you and how it feels. So if you can think about it, you know, the reason why it's so important to eat a good breakfast. If you can think about it, like I, you know, I can think about it t times that I had just carbs for breakfast. Like if yes. I just had a bagel. We've all experimented. Or, right? Yes. Or a muffin. <laughs> like those convenience things are easy. Yes. You can just grab them. Muffins and John, it's terrible. Right. Right. So you have that yes. and then you end up Oftentimes I crash. feel more hungry than if yes. I didn't eat at all. Yes. So then it's you're gonna get all these calories, probably five hundred plus calories of, of just sugar. And then your body constantly craves that for the rest of the day. So it really kind of wreaks havoc on your hormone levels, your hunger, yes. your blood sugar and all of those things affect your metabolism. So that's why it's really important to start out your day with that good breakfast because it's gonna set you up for the day and feeling satisfied. Yes. And that, when you feel satisfied, you don't overeat and you yeah. don't crave food and that's gonna help you. I hope everybody heard all of that because mm -hmm. I think that is so, I mean, we read it, we hear that, we hear Dr. Oz say it, we, you know, we see it on the TV, but mm -hmm. I think it sets up your whole day as far as your productivity, mm -hmm. your clear-mindedness, oh, sure. your attitude, because conversely, 
if you eat breakfast like that, mm -hmm. the skull and the donut, and then you go on to fast food for lunch, I think you're just setting yourself up for failure mm -hmm. uh, all around. Right. Because right. you, be, you become cranky, uh, lethargic. Right. 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 Oh, for sure. Tired. It affects your mood. Yeah. And your it creates mood, that cycle. Definitely. Yeah. It creates that vicious cycle. So, and, 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 and don't get me wrong, you know, we all have days where we're not going to eat perfectly. If it oh, happens absolutely. once in a while, absolutely. no big deal. Don't feel guilty about it or anything like that. You know, that's really important too, is to, give yourself some grace. But if you're doing it on a regular basis, that's when it starts that that cycle of, you know, affecting your metabolism, not feeling good, and constantly wanting more food. That's right. Yes. Right? That's why they yes. say food can be an addiction. It's because of the type of food that we're eating. So yes. food is not the enemy, it's the type of food that you're eating that can really create those symptoms and that type of addiction. Yes. That, and what's pumped into our food supply. I mean, Melissa's yeah. such great advice today. <laughs> and I know she can talk about all these other uh, tangents that we could get off on about the antibiotics. Maybe another, yeah, maybe, maybe one another, for another yes. episode, yeah. We'll, we'll get through the holiday uh, first and then get yeah. on to that. But I do think all of that, it's all cumulative. Right, for sure. Yes. These habits, either good or otherwise, it's a cumulative effect. Yeah. Because if you are eating healthy all day, oh my God, you're... You have this brightness, right. this live uh, feeling that I feel every day. You know, you have right. pep in your step. Yeah, and you feel confident. It's yes. what you're putting into your yes. body, so it makes yes. sense. So, yeah, but um, but yeah, so that's the that's really the first uh, really important habit, and you can start that today. You can start that this morning. You yes. can start that tomorrow. Um, just get into that routine. Um, and then the second uh, habit to start is to make sure you're getting enough protein in your diet. Yes. So eating protein, so this doesn't mean eating an excessive amount of protein. Right. I think a lot of times like there is the phase of, you know, really high protein diets, Atkins right. diets. Um, and this isn't bacon and hamburger. Right, yeah. right, you'll exactly. Give, you'll give right. examples. Exactly, yeah. yes, specific examples. So with protein, it's important to one know how much everyone has different protein needs. Mm -hmm. Most of us around 60 to 80 grams a day on okay. average. Um, but you want to evenly distribute that protein. So most of us tend to have a larger dinner and have most of our right. protein at that one meal. Right. Um, but that's a problem because one, you know, your metabolism does slow down after a certain time of day, typically after three or four o'clock. It doesn't mean you can't eat at that time, but right. if you're having a large, say 40 of your 60 grams of protein at that one meal, your body's not going to digest it as right. well. And that can over time lead to weight gain. So you want to, you know, for example, if your protein needs are 60 grams a day, you want to try to have 20 grams per meal and just evenly distribute Spread it. it out. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So the protein is really important because it keeps you full and satisfied. Yes. So, um, again, going back to the breakfast, like if you were having just carbs, for a meal, whether that's breakfast or lunch, or if you had a salad and you didn't add protein to it, if you didn't yes. add beans or So chicken, critical, so right? critical. Yeah, I, I, have, have I mean, I've had clients come to see me after, you know, trying to diet um, and being really strict with their, you know, their salads, for instance, like you said, a lot of people think like, oh, I'm eating a salad, this is healthy, but they're not adding any protein, they're just having right. vegetables, and then two hours later, they're starving starving yeah i mean you really need it <laughs> yes and you can on one day boil a whole dozen eggs right i mean yeah, that's what absolutely. i do that's what i do oh, now yeah, my do granddaughter that. walks around holding a hard-boiled egg in her hand and she just walks around eating yeah, it i know yeah. again great habits yeah just have it in the fridge so on the days you have salad it's right there right yes. exactly exactly make it it doesn't have to be complicated so back into that planning like just right. planning a little bit ahead doesn't have to be fancy meals just those hard-boiled eggs alone you know, take it one step at a time. Start with right. one food, one meal. Introduce you know, a new habit start. every, you know, every yeah. day is hard, every week. Right. Introduce a new habit every week. Right, yeah. right, which is why like when I meet with my clients, we typically meet every other week and we set one or two goals. We set one diet goal, one exercise goal. So oh, it's do. not a lot all at once. It's just like, let's focus on this. And then when you master that goal, that habit, then you go on to the next one. So it's not, I need to change everything. So all at once. important not yeah. to feel overwhelmed. Right. Yes. Exactly. I mean, it's, there's so we're bombarded with so many things in our life. Yeah. We're so busy that you know it doesn't have to be that that complicated. Simple is is even better. So, um, so yeah. So the protein very important. So some good protein sources as examples: lean chicken, chicken mm -hmm. breast, eggs. 
So eggs sometimes got a bad rap, but unless you have, I know. right, they can, you know, back and forth with that. But unless you have really high cholesterol and you, and you don't process cholesterol well in your body, then um, the eggs are not a problem. It's actually the the fatty meats like the steaks and the hamburgers and things that are cold more cuts. the culprit. No, no cold right. cuts. No nitrates. Stay away from right, cold cuts. right. Those are more the culprit yes. when it comes to affecting your cholesterol levels. So the eggs are really not a problem. It's a really great quality protein. So, and then other great proteins are beans, lentils. Yes. So even if you're a vegetarian, oh, beans I and love lentils. lentils. Yeah, really good and super filling. Um, and then also cottage cheese, Greek yogurt. The Greek yogurt has a lot more protein than the regular yogurt. I love it. Yeah. And um, yeah, those are kind of like the main the main protein sources. Just incorporating them with every meal yes. is going to help with your appetite, help with weight loss significantly. Great advice. <laughs> you can start this week. Very simple. Don't set goals of 30 or 40 pounds for Christmas. It's right, good, right. You know, right. You can even set a goal of maintaining weight during you maintain yes, your weight during yes. the holidays, and and that may be a great goal for you because in the not past, to gain during this time, right. and then in January start a weight loss pr program right. with you. Right. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. And everyone's ready at their own. If you feel like it's too overwhelming to focus on weight loss right now during the holidays then you know you start with these tips and start on just you know these tips alone will help you to maintain your weight right. um, and just to become more aware of, of the, what you're putting into your body so yeah. and um, and the last the third tip that I have um, which is something I always talk about with my clients it's is very surprising very important yeah yes. is eating slowly yes so Who this is thought? right and yeah. this is something that most of us are probably not doing um, because we're so busy and we're not, you know, we're distracted. We are, you know, not spending enough time with our meals, whether we're eating in front of the computer during our work, you know, our work break. Yes. It's not really a true break. Um, we're eating on the road um, and yeah. or we're eating in front of the TV. You know, a lot of these distractions cause us to eat a lot quickly, more, a lot more quickly right. um, and not pay attention to when we're getting full. So that's really why it's important to try to spend at least 20 minutes, ideally, having your meals. So if you want to set a goal of starting just with one meal to do that and really take that, that 20 minutes to do it, because that it takes 20 minutes for your body to feel full, for you actually to feel like your food is being digested. Yes. Um, Say that one more time. Yeah, it takes <laughs> This is what minutes. they know in Italy and why they don't right. understand here in America why right. we eat the way we do quickly in the car. They would, right. they would never catch an Italian <laughs> eating in the car. But first no, of all, no. they enjoy their meals. And you're saying again, 20 minutes right. after you've eaten the last bite from your meal. Yeah. Yeah, it's not I the do. 20 minutes right. of the eating, right? Right. 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 I, it's yes. post last fork, fork and knife down. It's mm -hmm. 20 minutes, right? Because if you if you the mind get eating. your brain gets the signal, right. right? Exactly, exactly. You have to. It takes time for your body to realize that it's full, and if you continue eating uh, past that point, or you're not you're not paying attention, or eating too fast then you don't give it time to digest and then that's right. when you that's when we overeat and then you yes. get to that point where you're so uncomfortable you're bloated yes. um you just don't feel good and then especially if you're you know say going out for date night or right. you know it's, and you're maybe with family or at a networking event and you want to feel good and then that happens and then it right. just completely changes your mood it does. right it's just you don't if you think about a time where that has happened i mean i know that I've been guilty of it. I've done it. You know, you Absolutely. go to your, oh, this food is so good. I'm really enjoying it. Yes. I'm not paying attention. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh no, like I, I had too much. Oh, I did and in New York not. City a few weeks ago. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh. And it happened. I said to my husband, I had forgotten what this feeling feels like mm -hmm. to be completely stuffed. And the uncomfortableness and the car was parked six blocks away. And mm -hmm. I said to our friend, no, we are all walking with you to get the car. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. And, then, yeah. and that's a terrible feeling. I mean, and I yeah. don't know. People live with that feeling every day. Right. right. They gorge yeah. every day of and course. every meal. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's very common and for many reasons. And and again, if this happens once in a while, not a, not a huge deal. Right. But if it's something that you're doing on a regular basis, then truly you're giving your body more than what it needs. And then that's what leads to weight gain. It's yes. not just the type of food that we're eating, but the Definitely fact that not. we're being mindless and we're not really paying attention to how much we're having and that's really critical so trying to take your time it, it's also more enjoyable experience right who wants like that you're... feeling yeah and god gave it's us that feeling fun. so that we wouldn't repeat it right exactly <laughs> it's trying to warn it's us it's uncomfortable <laughs> yes um, yes 
So and you did speak, Melissa did speak about incorporating exercise and part of this series, uh, the next uh, session we're going to have will be with a professional uh, personal trainer and he's going to put us through some of the, uh, like Melissa has set up, some three or four simple um, things that we can add to our exercise or lack thereof and the benefits of exercise. Mm -hmm. um, because we're all at different phases. You're right. a young mom, I'm an old lady. <laughs> so, you know, we what a young person can do is not the same as what a, um, someone uh, in my age group would do and so that's why we need professional guidance mm -hmm. and um, so I hope you will stay tuned over the next couple months and follow us through this series um, this being the most important I have a lot of books that I've read I'm not a professional on diet and exercise um, mainly nutrition I can cite them all, but I'm going to do a whole video on the books that I've learned so much from. And the one thing I've learned, and it's still true today, is our bodies are made in the kitchen and they're not designed in the gym. Mm -hmm. Even though I exercise six days a week, right. I know personally that to be true. Mm -hmm. That That's our right. bodies are made thin or otherwise in the kitchen yes definitely you can you can have you can have it work out every day but yes. if you don't change your diet it's yes. not going to change your body you're yes. not going to see results and no. so for those of us that struggle and need professional help we, we have a lot more we wanted to cover today but <laughs> we'll do that in the next episode yeah. um because i know everybody's busy mm -hmm. um I want everybody to tell you not only where, can, where they can find you, but what are the options uh, for payment, because I didn't know myself, if I have insurance, is it covered, mm -hmm. etc. cetera. And, and again, if you live in another state or you live um, too far from Milford, Connecticut, um, tell everybody how can they find you and that yeah. we can get them on the right path. Yes, definitely, <laughs> for, great for sure, help. very exciting. Yes, so um, so where you can find me on my website at www.melissamitri.com and on that website you can book a free call with me. So you can just scroll down on that main page. Nice. I do a free introductory call, a 30 minute call with all of my potential clients. So that way we can get to know each other a little bit. I can find out where what your struggles are and determine what the best path is for you and see if my program is a good fit for you. Um, I'm also on Instagram at mommy.nutritionist and you can also find me on Facebook at Melissa Mitri RD. I have a Facebook page and I provide a lot of support on there um, and I have a blog as well. Um, as far as um, working with me and payment, um, so I am working towards t accepting insurance. I currently accept um, Harvard Pilgrim and Cigna insurance plans. So you can have, if you have those insurances, you can have your nutrition visits covered with me, typically without a copay. Oh, that's um, exciting. Yeah, which yeah. is very exciting. So it's a motivator. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And then um, I'm also working towards accepting Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield and Connecticut. So oh, that should be awesome. coming down the pike hopefully by the new, you know the start of the new year, which is really exciting because I know those are two very popular plans. Um, and then, uh, but as far as um, just working with me in general, I think that a lot of times it may seem that there is a huge investment um, in working with a professional one-on-one -on -one. and the investment in even if you were to pay out of pocket, um, if I don't accept your insurance, it's not as, it may not be as much as you may think. So um, what I would encourage you to do is just get on a call with me so we can, um, you know, just talk and see what is going to be a good fit for you and kind of yes. take it from there. And we need to invest in ourselves. The dividend right. is real. The work is real. Right. But the dividend is uh, spectacular. There's nothing, you know, what is that old saying? Nothing tastes better than how looking... I don't want to say thin because I don't think we, we identify that as a barometer anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say someone being skinny or thin is therefore healthy or attractive. I just think if you're feeling healthy by eating better right. and maybe losing some excess weight, um, mm -hmm. that dividend is real what will that cost it doesn't it shouldn't matter don't get your nails done <laughs> color right. your hair at home <laughs> well, this is a real investment right i always like to just think of it as if you were going to work with any professional is yes what is the alternative what is what, what is the what, alternative you know what would happen if you were to not do that and um you know where do you see yourself what are your right. goals and if you know that you've been trying 
you know, all of these diets and they're just not working for you, not keeping the weight off, you're not happy with them, then why not try working with a professional that can give you that individual guidance for you? Right, right. So. 2020 is going to be your year. I'm going to have all the links to everything that Melissa has suggested below. And what is really important for us is that we want you to write in, write in the comment box below. Um, what are you struggling with? What are the pitfalls? What, what specific food group are you um, having trouble uh, yeah. Right, with eating, like getting enough of, getting or like if you're a nighttime of. snacker, if you're a grazer, like what are your biggest struggles so we can, yes. you know, Are you a late answer. night eater? Um, right. well, you know, write in the questions that you have in the way in the next session, Melissa can answer them. Yeah. And better yet, call her directly, start the process. Yeah. Um, you'll feel better. Her clients are all satisfied and happy. Mm -hmm. And it's a process though. And of if, course. Don't talk to just your girlfriends <laughs> <laughs> because they will misdirect you and they will give you the wrong information. <laughs> and um, don't take any illicit uh, pills in a bottle that they show also on late night TV that right. will give you some spell. Right. Bond. right. Your friends probably mean well. <laughs> they Your friends do. probably mean well, right? They all do. I mean, they my, do. but but they they don't know you as an individual and what's going to work for you. Right. I think yeah. Melissa's best advice is what works for someone may not work for someone else. I'm an intermittent faster. Everyone knows that that watches, but I don't want to propose that as an uh, only option. That's why I'm here teaming with professionals to help us all get on the road to good health. Yes. And so, um, happy Thanksgiving. Yes. Thank yes. you happy for Thanksgiving. letting Thank me you. interrupt your busy day. Oh, of course. No, no. Glad to be here. I hope everyone has a great holiday season. Yes. Yeah, exciting. And listen, we're all going to put on a few pounds over the holidays. Don't fret it. it right. If you're armed with great help and great advice, we can all go through this process together. Yes. And, uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. We will see you again right around that time. And uh, thank you for watching this episode of What's New with Nadine. Thank you, Yay. Melissa. Thank you, Nadine, thank for you. having me. Thank you. <laughs>